Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the first module of CN super important questions from the exam point of view and in this video we will be having 8 questions from the previous year papers and the model question paper make sure you uh, watch this video till the end and solve all these 8 questions you can easily score more than 80% marks in the exam and before starting please do like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this so without wasting any more time let's get started the first question is explain the 4 basic topologies used in the networks okay list the advantages and disadvantages for each of them okay four basic topologies you have to discuss so what are the four basic topologies the first one is the mesh topology okay let me show you the diagram this is the mesh topology okay one thing what you can observe is each device is connected to each device okay this is the mesh topology where every device will be connected to the every device okay so uh, there is a point to point link between each devices and for n nodes uh, network there will be n into n minus 1 by 2 links okay if n is equal to 5 5 into uh, 4 in divided by 2 that is equal to 10 okay so 10 links will be there for 5 nodes okay so this is about the mesh, uh, mesh topology what are its advantages the use of dedicated links guarantees that each connection can carry its own load okay so one connection for uh, the load between the two devices thus eliminating traffic problem traffic will not be there because of different devices two devices are connected they will be transferring the data via that link okay mesh topology is robust and it is having high security the disadvantages include every device must be connected to the every other device otherwise it will not work okay sheer bulk of the wire can be greater than the space available hardware required to connect each link can be prohibitively expensive okay this is some of the disadvantages moving to the second one which is star topology in star topology each device has point to point connection okay but it is connected to one single hub okay this is the star topology in star topology it does not allow direct traffic between the devices we cannot send it directly we have to send it via hub okay so the advantages include star topology is less expensive and it includes robustness disadvantage is the dependency at a single point suppose that the hub fails the entire system will fail so there is a single point dependency third one is bus topology in bus topology it is a multi-point multi-point means see as you can see this is one point second point third point and uh, like that this there are multiple points uh, through which the bus is connected so it is called as multi-point one long cable as acts as a backbone to the link all the devices into the network okay advantages include ease of installation it is easy to install and uh, bus uses less cabling than mesh or star topology so there is less cabling here because single line is only there right so it is having less cabling but the disadvantages include it is difficult to reconnect it and fault isolation you will not know where the fault has come from suppose that it, this uh, laptop has not received the data the fault can have come from here it can come from here it can come from here we have to check uh, in different places so finding out fault is not easy and second is the fault in a bus causes all the transmission to stop suppose that there is an error here so the data will not be able to transfer from here to any of the devices because it is connected via a single wire so there is if there is a fault in the wire the entire line does not work that is another disadvantage okay moving on to the fourth one which is ring topology in ring topology each device has dedicated point to point connection with only two devices on either side so it is connected with two devices this is also like a bus but it is a circular bus okay so here signal is passed in one direction from device to device until it reaches the destination suppose that this is device a and this is device b i want to send a message from a to b i'll send it to this i'll send then it will send to this then the, it will send to this like that it will keep on going in one direction until it reaches the destination okay what are the advantages it is relatively easy to install each device will only link to its immediate neighbors okay see as you can see this is uh, just uh, connected with each of these uh, two neighbors so if you want to add a new device you can add it by just uh, removing this connection putting here removing this connection putting here that is another advantage okay so to delete or add device it is very easy by changing only the two neighboring connections disadvantages include unidirectional traffic can be disadvantage in a simple ring a break in the ring can disable the entire network okay so if there's a break in the ring entire network will be disabled okay that was about the topologies moving on to the second super important question which is describe tcp ip reference model with diagram okay so this is the tcp ip uh, reference model here you can see there are five layers the top layer is the application layer below that is transport layer below that is network layer below that is detailing layer and the last one is the physical layer okay so let's understand the characteristics and the purposes for each of these layer let's start with the first layer which is physical layer physical layer is responsible for carrying individual bits in a frame and across the link so individual bits 0 1 0 0 1 like that those bits are being carried inside the physical layer two devices are connected by a transmission medium so this is the sender this is the 
receiver and it's connected via transmission medium. The bits are received from the data link layer and are transmitted over the physical layer. From the data link layer, we get the bits, we transfer uh, via the transmission medium in the physical layer and that will be again sent back to the uh, data link at the receiver side. Okay. So this is how uh, the physical layer is. Second is the data link layer. When link is to be determined, which link is to be used, that is uh, calculated by uh, data link layer. Okay, it is responsible for taking the datagram and moving it across the link. The datagram is being sent here. Okay, so in this, the bytes, bits and bytes are being sent here. The datagram is being sent. Okay, that is a standard for sending the data in data link layer. And the link can be LAN or WAN, local area network or wide area network. That means what is the size of network? Is it small? Is it big? And TCP layer does not define a specific protocol for data link layer. So there is no specific protocol. It uh, takes the datagram and encapsulates it in a packet called as a frame. So see, this is the datagram. Okay, this is the datagram. And it is encapsulated in a packet called as a frame. Okay, in a frame it is encapsulated. Each link layer protocol may provide different service. There will be different services for each data link. Uh, layer protocol. Okay. Next is the network layer. Network layer has is responsible for creating a connection. Okay. The main connection between two uh, devices is made by the uh, network layer. Okay. Between the source computer and the destination computer. The communication at the network layer is host to host. Okay. From one host of the sender site, the receiver site host is getting connected. Okay. It is from host to host. And the network layer in the internet is responsible for the main protocol, internet protocol, which is other words, uh, I mean, the internet protocol is also known as IP. You have heard, right, IP address. So that comes under the network layer. The fourth one is the transport layer. In transport layer, it gets the message from the application layer, encapsulates it into the transport layer packet, and send it through a logical or imaginary connection. That means from the top, from the application layer, it receives a uh, a packet it receives and that packet is encapsulated at the transport layer. Encapsulation means covering it up. So this is the packet received. It will cover it up here. Send uh, to the uh, the receiver side. Receiver side's application layer. Okay. So the protocols used are TCP and UDP. The last one, the topmost layer is the application layer. In this layer, the communication happens by sending a request and receiving a response. Very simple. We'll send the request and we'll receive a response. That happens at the application layer. Few protocols include HTTP, SMTP, FTP, and Telnet, SSH, etc. Okay, so this happens in the application layer. This is the top layer. Okay, so in the exam also, you have to write two to three points for each of these layers and make that uh, diagram which I showed you about. Okay. Moving on to the uh, third question, what are the four fundamental characteristics of data communication? Very simple, four fundamental characteristics. First one is delivery. System must deliver it to the correct output, correct output destination. Okay. Accuracy. The system must deliver data accurately. There should be no errors in the uh, errors introduced in that. Timeliness. Must deliver the data in a timely manner. Jitter. Jitter refers to the variation in the uh, packet arrival time. Means how late it is arrived. Okay, that difference. Okay, so four fundamental characteristics are delivery, accuracy, timeliness, and jitter. What are those? Repeat with me. Delivery, accuracy, timeliness, and jitter. Okay. Going on to the fourth question, explain five comp what are the five components of data communication. Okay, in uh, data communication, there are five components. First one is the message. What is a message? Message is the information or the data that is to be communicated. Second is the sender. Okay, this is the sender. Sender is the device that sends the message. And third is the receiver. Receiver is the device that receives the message. And from where you are sending, you are sending through a transmission medium. So transmission medium is the physical path by which a message travels from the sender to the receiver. Okay, so this is the path from where the data is being sent from the sender to the receiver. Okay, and protocol. Protocol is a set of rules that govern com uh, data communication. Mean, means what type of data can come here, how much data can be sent from here, what time it will be sent, how much time it will take to reach. All those things will be defined in the protocol. Protocol are nothing but the rules uh, to share the data. Okay. These are the five uh, components. Message, sender, receiver, transmission media, medium and protocol. Okay. Going on to the fifth question, super important question, explain the different types of data flow between the two devices. Okay, I have to explain different types of data flow. There are three types of data flow. Data flow means what? From the sender to the receiver sending the data. Okay, this is called as data flow. There are three types of it. Simplex, half duplex and full duplex. 
So let's understand each one by one. Uh, what is uh, simplex? Okay, if this diagram you can observe in simplex, what's happening? This is the main frame and this is the monitor. So in uh, simplex, what's happening is the data is being sent in one direction from the main frame to the monitor. So direction of data is constant here, and uh, it can be sent from one device to other device. It cannot receive here. Okay, it uh, the direction cannot be changed. Okay, that is called as simplex. Okay, and next one is the half duplex. In half duplex both can send as well as receive okay but not at the same time if it is sending uh, this can only receive and if this is sending it can only receive okay like that at one time only uh, one of them can happen and the third one is full duplex full duplex means sending and receiving the data at the same time means get send as well as receive uh, parallelly okay and uh, same at this side as well okay so uh, in simplex mode the communication is unidirectional okay in half duplex each station can transmit and receive but not at the same time in full duplex both station can transmit and receive simultaneously okay going on to the sixth super important question which is differentiate between circuit switch network and packet switch network okay what do you understand by the term circuit circuit is uh, nothing but a dedicated connection called as a circuit it's always available between the two end systems okay this is system one this is system two and if there is a connection between them it is always available that is called as a circuit okay a switch can be make, uh, make it uh, active or inactive okay if you observe this diagram carefully there is a switch here and there is a switch here right and these are the devices connected now this switch can be turned on or off based on the requirement okay so based on that if it is turned on or off the uh, connection will be made between the uh, devices present here and devices present here okay what is packet switch network okay in packet switch network there will be communication happening between the two ends in the form of blocks of packets okay this allows us to make the switches function for both storing and forwarding so switches also will be here also it is called as a router and here we can store the uh, packets and then we can forward also and it can receive also from both ends okay this is called as packet uh, switch network okay a router or a packet switch network has a queue that can store and forward the packet. So in the queue, the packets will be stored first, and whenever time comes, it will be forwarded. Okay. Moving on to the seventh super important question, which is explain two principles in protocol layering. What are the two principles? Okay, the first principle is it detects it dictates that if we want bi-directional communication, we need to make each layer so that it's able to perform two opposite tasks even in uh, one in each direction. So we have to define what is the tasks okay that protocol means uh, principles and uh, what should that include so the first principle dictates that if you want bi-directional communication okay means from here and here both want communication we need to make each layer so that it is able to perform two opposite tasks in uh, one direction it should be able to perform two opposite tasks okay means sending and receiving at the same time it should be able to do second principle is that two objects under each layer at both sides should be in the identical means from the trans uh, transport layer uh, it should be received to the transport layer only from application layer it should be received at the application layer only application layer cannot be uh, sent directly to the transport layer of the receiver okay and so on vice versa so those things cannot happen uh, it should have identical at the same layer okay going on to the last super important question which is what is the guided transmission media explain the twisted pair cable in a detail okay so transmission media means what the way in which the physical layer transfers the data okay that is called as transmission medium guided means it will be in the form of wires okay so explain twisted pair cable in detail they have asked one of them which is twisted pair cable totally three are there and uh, among the three twisted pair cable and coaxial cable is important okay so in this case since the question is just about the twisted pair cable i'll be discussing about that only so guided media is what which are those that provide conduit form of uh, from one device to another device, conduit from one device to another device, including twisted pair cable, coaxial cable, and fiber optic cable. Okay, so these three things are there. Include the twisted pair cable. We'll be discussing twisted pair cable in depth. Okay, so uh, the second point is uh, signal traveling along any of these media is directed and contained by the physical limits of the medium. Means the wire will be limited, right? It cannot be uh, very large or in the both the sides very uh, high depth. Uh, height and width but it will be contained in a single uh, lay, uh, line okay so between this only the data will be transferred that is called as guided uh, transmission media so let's discuss the twisted pair cable in detail a twisted pair cable consists of two con uh, conductors normally copper so there will be two conductors conductor one conductor two both are made of what copper okay next what happens each with its own insulation plastic it is covered with plastic the copper it is covered with plastic so plastic covering is there on top of that twisted together okay that is only called as twisted, twisted pair cable as you can see this is the uh, copper uh, wire and this is the plastic which is on top of it 
and uh, they have twisted with each other okay so this is called as twisted pair cable one wire is used to carry the signal the, uh, and uh, to the receiver other is used as a ground reference okay the, so this is the uh, application of it one use carries the signals one is used as a ground uh, ground reference further it can be divided as unshielded twisted pair cable or utp and the shielded twisted pair cable which is stp okay so in unshielded versus shielded what happens so this is a plastic cover if only plastic cover is there it is called as unshielded transmission uh, twisted pair and stp shielded transfer uh, shielded twister uh, twisted pair cable here a metal shield will be also there along with the plastic cover okay this is the stp shielded and the co connector which we use in the utp is rj45 rj means registered jack registered jack 45 will be using for the connector performance of twisted pair cable is measured in decibels per kilometer means per kilometer how many decibels are there it sharply increases with the frequencies above 100 kilohertz okay more than 100 kilohertz if it is there the performance will also be increasing okay the deep decibels per kilometer if the uh, frequency is more okay twisted pair cable is used in the telephone lines when we uh, make a landline call right so that time twisted pair cable is used to transfer the data to provide the voice and data channels okay that's all these are open mode question do don't miss any of them and uh, uh, please do like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one